Hello everyone, welcome to Go Campus. This is Ashwini with you. So in this video we will see how to become an orthopedic surgeon in the UK via Plab route. Now the preliminary steps will remain the same for all the specialities. If you've already watched my previous videos, you will know the basic steps that's required. But however, if you're watching this for the first time, for your quick understanding, I'll take you through from the beginning. So first, you'll have to clear your IELTS or OET exam. That's your English language requirement. Once you're done with your English proficiency test, you book your PLAB 1 exam. Once you're done with your PLAB 1, you go ahead to UK and clear your PLAB 2 exam. After you finish your PLAB 2 exam, apply for your GMC license. Once you successfully receive your license and then start applying for the jobs in the UK. So after you successfully get selected for a job, you apply for your tier 2 visa and all that and then you start your job in the NHS. Now you start either a FY2 training job. This is a training job to sign up your FY2 competencies. Now we all know that to get a direct FY2 training job, it's a little tough. So most of the IMGs do get into a non-training job and sign up crest form. That is the alternate way to sign up your FY competencies. So till here, I hope you all are clear. We finish our English language, we finish PLAB 1, we finish PLAB 2, then we get into a job and sign up the FY2 competencies. Now after this, to get into orthopedic speciality in the UK, you have two routes. One is via core surgical training. This is an uncoupled training program. So there's also another route which was introduced recently. That's the pilot batch that is improving surgical training. It's a two year program. It is a run through program. So I hope till here we are clear. You know that to get into orthopedics, you have two options. One is to get into after you sign up your FI2 competencies, you get into core surgical training. The other one is the recent pilot batch which has been started to move towards IST. Now to get into core surgical training, what are the competencies required? Or most of them will have this doubt in the mind. How do I get selected for core surgical training? Now to get selected for CST, your selection is based on your interview scores. That is how you're going to perform in the interview. Plus your portfolio, that is your self-assessment score. There is no MSRA for CST because this is an uncoupled training program. Now to get into core surgical training, as I said, there is no MSRA, but your selection is purely based on your interview scores and your self-assessment scores. Now when we say self-assessment, it's nothing but your portfolio. So the major domains which are part of the scoring criteria when it comes to your portfolio for CST is, you can see it on the screens. So the first one is commitment to speciality. Commitment to speciality, there are different different ways they evaluate this commitment to speciality. One is if you've already passed your MRCS part A. So that gives you kind of four points. The second one is your operative experience, that is your surgical experience. Third is your um, you attending surgical conferences. Fourth one is you doing couple of short courses in surgery. So this all proves your commitment to speciality. Now also before I go ahead, I don't want to miss this point, for core surgical training, you should not have more than 18 months of experience. If you have more than 18 months of experience, you will be overqualified for the position and you will not be eligible to apply. So if you are aiming at getting into CST, please make sure back home in India, you do not cross more than 18 months of experience. So coming back to the major domains, first one we just finished, that is commitment to speciality. Next, you having an additional postgraduate degree. In the UK, this is quite common. Every doctor in the UK, along with their regular training program, they all take up MBA, Masters, MSc, different, different Masters program. So you having an additional PG degree will give you a few points. You having prizes, awards, achievements, this will give you a few points. You being involved in quality improvement, clinical audit will give you points. You having experience in teaching, it need not be formal professor kind of a teaching, even informal teaching will give you points. Of course, with proper feedback forms, course plan, evidence should be recorded properly. So teaching experience will give you points. Training in teaching. Now we all know that in the UK, teaching experience is given very high weightage. So NHS also sees, have you learned how to do effective teaching? So that's called as training in teaching. 
So you undergoing couple of courses in teaching methodology, this will give you couple of points. Presentations, you participating in international conferences and you being a presenter, whether it could be oral presentation, e-poster presentation, this gives you points. And then having publication. In the UK, there is higher weightage for PubMed cited publications. So if you want good number of points, make sure your paper is published in PubMed index journals. Now lastly, it's leadership and management. Now as a doctor, you'll be working with different teams in the hospital. It's not just you. So in the UK, there's high weightage given to doctors with leadership skills and team management skills. So you should hold a position for six months to claim points under this section. It could be even your back home experience. It need not be only in the UK. And the best part about this is they are not asking that you should hold leadership position only in your medical school or only in the hospital where you're working. Even you being involved in charity, volunteer works, any not-for-profit organizations, you do get points. But everything should have proper evidence. So now you've understood the basic steps to start working in the UK. You know first you have to sign up your FY2 competencies, then apply for core surgical training for two years. In the two years of the time, you have to pass your MRCS Part A and Part B. After that, you have to apply for ST3 in orthopedics. So orthopedic specialty training in the UK is for six years, which is divided into phase two and phase three. So phase two is for four years and phase three is for two years. So altogether, for you to become an orthopedic surgeon in the UK, it takes minimum eight years. That is two years of CST and then six years of your specialty training in ortho, which is divided into phase two and phase three. So this is all about how to become an orthopedic surgeon in the UK. So for your quick reference, we've put across the competition ratio for last year for orthopedics. The official link is given in the description below. We've also put across the application scoring, that is your self-scoring, self-assessment for your CST, which is also given in the description. Also, which is very, very important, the training curricula for orthopedics is put across for your quick reference. So if you are interested in competing for orthopedic speciality, then please go through all the required details. All the official links is given in the description box below. So thank you so much and all the very best to all the doctors aspiring to get into ortho in the UK. Thank you so much.